Hi, this is Johu Sapan Bhartia, and today we have with us Leonard Falk, release lead of Kubernetes 1.26. Leonard, it's great to have you on the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, first of all, uh, talk a bit about uh, this. Uh, before we talk about this release, talk a bit about what is the, the role of uh, release lead? Is it like for Kubernetes in general? Is it for a specific release? Talk about that. So the release lead is, is a role in the community. So it's uh, voluntarily work, um, you could say. So it changes every le release cycle. So release lead is responsible for managing, orchestrating one release. So in my case, 1.26. And next release, um, 1.27, it changes again. So somebody else in the community who has been part of the release team for quite some time steps up to, to re lead the release. Um, and yeah. It's it's community role. What is the whole procedure of you know folks joining the release team and then you know playing? So once you have been a release lead, do you move to a different role? You can choose to do something in the community, as you know, in the CNCF community, you know, fetch water, pick wood, or <laughs> different <laughs> roles for different you know folks are there depending on your interest. So the release team in general, there's like an like a shadow application. Um, so you can join as a shadow. So you have like one. Uh, one leading the team, so for example, the docs team, and you can apply as a shadow. So you don't, I mean, you can you can mess up and everything. You don't need to know anything. You can basically it's like a training program in general. So you basically get like uh, introduced into the Kubernetes community in general. So how to work in an open source team and so on, and then you um, basically can switch roles and so on. And at the end, you're also kind of good prepared to in like in general to contribute to open source. So this is, like, for example, for me in, in university, it's not something that I have not really learned or this is not part of the, of the like, like any program or, 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 or so. So you don't really learn how to contribute to open source. So there's like a new world kind of. So these kind of programs help to basically just, I don't know, get into open source contributing and so on and also joining some meetups and, and so on. So You actually touched upon the next question that I was going to ask was that, of course, when you contribute to CNCF through, you know, this team, you do help the community. But what are the benefits for folks? You know, you did type, I just want to go up quickly in detail. It can be your own personal experience also. What do you folks, you know, benefit from being part of the release team? How does it help you? So joining the release team in, in general is, is a great way to meet new people. So you have already like this structure. So you have the structure of a team and you join and you don't know anybody basically, but it's like a big team. It's like 40 people or, or so. And you also join like a special interest group in Kubernetes. So, so you have like a good way into meeting new people. You also have a good, for example, if you, if you are at KubeCon or some other conference, you have a good opener just in general to talk to other people. So I've been part of the release team and then you can talk a, bit about contributing to open source so this is one great like uh, benefit of of contributing to release team you also learn a lot i would say so like how to how this community actually works together and how to cut those releases and how does kubernetes manage documentation for example or how does kubernetes manage features and everything like this so so you also learn how these big projects work with that and it's also good for your resume and, and everything so thanks for uh, talking about that now let's talk about kubernetes um, talk a bit about uh, this release itself of course the theme is electrifying but from your perspective from the perspective of the community member and for the larger ecosystem what are some of the big themes that are associated with this release i would say this release does not have like this one major theme it's like a lot of smaller things smaller like nice nice additions to kubernetes which matter to some people maybe to some not so much um, but in general it's like a it's like 39 features so it's quite quite a lot of changes i would say um so you cannot really pinpoint like any like this is like a big a big major like change um but if you you can bundle up uh, those things into for example like we have like a lot of changes to security we have now, for example, like artifact signing, which graduates to, to beta. We have now Windows privileged containers and also some changes to admission control. We have um, some 
changes to metrics. So, um, for example, that we now have like, I mean, most of those things are like also some, some of those things are like internal. So it matters to, for example, developers. So in the sense of, for example, storage, we um, have like a big initiative to uh, refactor some, some internal code. Um, which is the C CSI entry migration, which has been you now worked on for a couple of releases, and we also made some big changes there. So these changes does not make so much difference to the end user, but it prepares Kubernetes or the team to basically grow and and continue to implement features. And yeah, we have like uh, created or written down a release blog post which talks about all the major themes. So it would be good to dig into or read it and and just uh, see if like any change mentioned on this blog post affects affects you and it also links like further documentation and everything. So if you're interested in that, if I ask you from because you are lead there for this release, um, not that in general team, but some you know major changes, major features. You know, of course, changing container image registries there, uh, 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 removal of you know CRI alpha, and some graduation of vSphere you know to stable. So if I ask you from your perspective or the perspective of where you interacted that these are some of course you cannot pick and choose some but some of the major highlights you know to summarize them what would that be i would probably um <laughs> choose that we um so the release team in general so there's like we have the release uh, team and also the release engineering team so there's like two parts basically all under the uh, sick release and the release engineering team has made like some in advancements into um, that we now push the images to a new registry. So this is uh, if 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 I have to pick something, I, I would pick <laughs> the the one from from our uh, SIG. <laughs> so we we now push uh, the artifacts to new endpoint registry dot khs dot io, and before we pushed it to khs uh, gcr dot io. Um, now we have it basically under community control and so on and. Um, this is this is a nice nice improvement to get like I don't know more autonomy for the community. Since you mentioned uh, speed, I am also curious. What are the reasons for picking the theme at electrifying? So this is like every release has a theme. It does not need to have like any like crazy meaning. So it's 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 just basically for the release team release lead to to leave a mark basically on on Kubernetes. So I chose electrifying, which kind of stands for multiple things. For one thing, it, it stands for for um, like power consumption in general. So I'm also leading um, under the CNCF the um, technical advisory group for uh, environmental sustainability. So with the theme electrifying, I just want to raise awareness that Kubernetes hosts like huge systems. It's get, getting used like everywhere across the industry. And with that, Kubernetes also consumes a lot of like energy, so which is sim simply put just like a problem, and maybe that's something that we or that's something that we definitely want to focus on in new releases. But electrifying also stands for that we um, use a lot of automation tooling this release into creating the release artifacts and everything else, and it also stands for that the community itself is just electrifying. So it's <laughs> you can ch you can basically pick what what you what you like best. Excellent, excellent. Uh, can you also talk a bit about um, either some of the depreciations and removals that users should should be aware of? For the deprecations and removals, we also published a blog post. Um, for one, we now deprecated um, the CRI um, API um, interface. Um, to uh, from alpha.2 um, to v.1, which is basically a change. Probably most folks don't, do not really notice that because it's it's already done if you use like certain tools. But if you, for example, now use a container D, you need to upgrade to 1.6. So depending basically on the CRI that you are using, you need to check if, if 1.26 uh, works for you. Um, so you need to refer basically to cryo and any other resource that you use. Um, so this is like a bigger deprecation, I would say. The other ones are a little bit smaller, but 
they are all like described in good detail, I would say, on the blog post. So this is not you know, a concern, but if I simply ask you that, are there any you know issues that people should also be aware of when they move from one release of Kubernetes to uh, you know the next release of Kubernetes? Also, from your perspective, how many people because uh, there are a lot of Kubernetes vendors who offer, you know, there. So talk, talk, also talk about, about, do you see any friction and how you folks try to remove the friction so that, because what we have seen in industry is some folks are running very, very older releases and that becomes a problem. So as to encourage them to, to, to keep up so that there is not a big gap between the latest release versus somebody's running uh, running an un unsupported release. So upgrading the, re um, the Kubernetes version you're running, this is, this is kind of a problem that folks, as as you as you said, uh, are using like old versions, because for example now in in the sense for that we publish artifacts to um, to the registries, we don't uh, update any. Uh, I think the la latest version now was one dot twenty two, and now we only upgrade uh, I think or patch one dot twenty three releases. So this is the last one. So if there are like any security things. Um, those those things will not get updated to one or twenty or or whatever. So it would be good in that sense to upgrade um, because we don't uh, we don't have the bandwidth basically to maintain all those old versions and keep pushing upgrades. Um, so this is like uh, highly encouraged. Usually there's a lot of I mean there's a lot of folks who are upgrading the clusters. Um, so if there's like any problems, uh, usually this is uh, known. So if you have like like any certain setup and you need to upgrade the cluster, you're rarely the only one having the problem. So there's like a huge community um, having uh, also those problems or no problems at all. And um, yeah, so I, I would always encourage uh, upgrading the versions. Obviously, not on day one, <laughs> especially not if you, if you have like uh, any like very uh, security related or like uh, important workloads. Um, but in general, stick with um, the cloud, uh, oh, uh, public cloud um, services, for example. So if if they have like a stable release, you can be very certain that this is like. Uh, what you should do. Leo, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about this release and also the role of uh, release team because people are at times more important than the technology itself. So thank for sharing those aspects as well and how folks can also benefit from joining this team. And of course, uh, thanks for sharing all the uh, details about this release and I look forward to talk to you soon again. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me.